Thought that was the end of it, huh? Nope. One would think King of the Hill would not have so many mysteries surrounding it. It is a pretty cut and dry animated sitcom after all, but everything has its secrets, lost information and lore that borders on legendary, and just when you think you're out, you get pulled right back in. When the Will Rogers Institute clip first surfaced, people were surprised there was unseen King of the Hill material, though a few diehard fans had been previously aware of it. That there was still more out there, something only they knew about, something long rumored to be far more substantial. A long forgotten King of the Hill spin-off known only to hardcore fans, a digital equivalent to Nessie or Bigfoot, something spawned in whispers on forums and message boards, so obscure many think it is an urban legend, as any substantial material from it is non-existent. But people also discounted the Will Rogers charity clip, so why could this legend not be real also? This though was something far more substantial. Not a measly minute-long clip, it was supposedly a full TV movie, one that proof of has long taunted and tantalized media archaeologists, but it still sits sealed away in a corporate vault. Though it may remain elusive, this video will try to give a better picture of it, follow leads, leaks, and rumors about it, hot or cold, in a vain hope of at least crafting a description of it. The web, after all, did become aware of it somehow through some means, perhaps even through a now unfortunately removed YouTube upload. Now, go with God, as the top is blown off this conundrum and its existence proven once and for all. It is ironic that King of the Hill's own spin-off fell into total obscurity when the series itself was cancelled to make room for a spin-off. <sighs> People are still justifiably annoyed by that. What is interesting though is when this spin-off is claimed to have been produced, between 2000 and 2001, or between seasons 4 and 5 of the series. So not in the middle, as King of the Hill ran from about 1997 to 2010, but definitely at its peak. There was little demand, but the actual idea was the product of jokes between showrunners Mike Judge, Jim Dotrieve, and Greg Daniels, an in-the-moment idea the three pitched to Fox TV in 2000. Not only that, but it was also to be live-action. Yes, a live-action spin-off from King of the Hill. So what exactly was this spin-off, and who was it about? The main cast? Eh, besides trying to cast that horror show, it would just not work. Hank, Dale, Bill, and Boomhauer all got main features on the original show, each often having major roles in each episode. Maybe something more like the Jeffersons? Give a secondary family their own show? No, not that either. Too hard to cast. And nobody wanted a show about Con or Cotton. Well, except maybe Cotton. I killed Fitty Man! Then how about something like Frasier, a show about John Redcorn? Eh, still the same problem. Too major character, too close to the main cast. He too had spotlight episodes. No, they had something much stranger. Something more out there. A thing out of context even for the show. Monsignor Martinez. Or should I say Los Dias y Los Noches de Monsignor Martinez. In universe, the favorite Spanish language TV show of the Hill family, Mike Judge's riff on Spanish telenovelas, The Days and Nights of Monsignor Martinez, voiced by Judge, a badass priest who sets out to rid the world of crime with his iconic catchphrase, Vaya con Dios. Vaya con Dios. What began as a quick gag in season two almost spiraled into its own show, and to be honest, it makes sense. This would not be a direct adaption, but all the pieces were there. Plus, it was supposed to be comedic. Not as absurd as the show within the show, but as an action comedy. The character was a shared creation of Mike Judge and Jim Dotrieve, Judge coming up with the concept and Dotrieve inserting the Monsignor's first appearance in the season 2 episode The Sun That Got Away. The trio of Jim Dotrieve, Greg Daniels, and Mike Judge enjoyed the character so much they made a script for an adaption. Judge even claims the spur-of-the-moment treatment was funnier than anything they actually wrote for King of the Hill. As should be obvious, such a backstory and praise gave the concept near-mythical status. Then how did this thing get developed and pitched? There was little known about it, but this is the part that seems to have the most info, as the IMDB entry describes this show as such. A spin-off on the animated sitcom King of the Hill, this would have been a more action-focused cartoon based on an in-universe fictional character, Monsignor Martinez, and his adventures. 
According to claims, Fox slash Fox TV commissioned the pilot in 2000, but development on the concept TV movie was not completed until 2001, so the two dates are often interchangeable for the show's creation. The three showrunners writing the pilot, which was to be titled In the Beginning. What proof is there for this besides the IMDb page, wiki entries, and scattered forum posts? Enough to substantiate these claims, at least. Besides several entries in TV books, we will come back to those, there is a digital article from March 8th, 2001 on Variety. It references the show being greenlit, but adds little information, though it is old and direct enough to be proof that this was very real. Then what exactly was it? Cartoon or live action? The INDB entry claims it was a cartoon, but a multitude of other sources imply it was live action, as to properly spoof the absurdity of the telenovela, but it would have been completely in English. So most of the references to it being animated are likely misunderstandings, as people were rightfully confused about a cartoon getting a live action spin-off. Besides these references, several other factors lead one to believe it was definitely live action, mainly looking at the cast listed on the IMDb page and their credits. Though it is not infallible, the page lists such things as set decoration, costume design, and makeup department. No idea where this info is taken from, but as it is listed, this highly suggests the pilot movie was live action. After the adaption was written, pitched, and greenlit, what happened to it? Uh, nothing. Or well, nobody actually knows for sure. It did not seem to go anywhere, nor does what Judge Dotriever Daniels have said suggests it actually went anywhere. But somehow, the internet did become aware of it, though not too aware about what it actually was. All that is known is that the pilot was finished and put into the hands of Fox, and they did not like it. No one is truly sure why, but remember, this was produced in 2000-2001, so Judge, haha, <laughs> these circumstances with a slightly different lens than today's. The best evidence for why the show was shelved is a quote from John Herman, a judge regular, though I have not been able to actually find a source for the quote. Herman claimed, to some extent, The pilot was funny and full of social commentary, but Fox did not pick up the series as they, Herman thinks, would not want a Catholic priest shooting people. Oh, how the times have changed. So Fox locked their copy away in an impenetrable vault. Then how is there so much known about it then? And is there any way to get access to it? According to an IMDb post from 2010, so give this an extra grain of salt, there may have been beta viewing copies sent out in 2000 to some test audiences, with one user claiming his father received a copy but returned it. And since then, any of these known beta viewing copies have vanished. Surely there are other tapes out there though, right? Yes, at least there was. Mike Judge did have a copy of the pilot. He confirmed it last month in an interview, so he is still aware of it, but unfortunately his copy was destroyed in a break-in. Someone else may have a similar rough-cut copy, but Judge doubts there are any final copies still out there. If it ever does surface, it would not be the final cut. Though Judge did confirm he is interested in doing something with the idea one day, so there is hope it may exist at some point in some form. But he has no way to legally publish the original version and even lacks a copy of it. Though, supposedly there may be an equally unobtainable third copy. This though I have found little proof for. Its only mention is in a Cartoon Brew article from 2007. The article talks about a trove of King of the Hill material Jim Dotrieve donated to Texas State University. Material which is now contained in the Whitliffe Collection slash Southwestern Writers Collections as an exhibit. The article mentions a possible copy of the Monsignor Martinez pilot tape donated alongside this stuff, but there is little proof or mention to substantiate this claim. I was able to dredge up a catalog of the collection, but it does not list any Monsignor Martinez material. What was donated is interesting in its own right, showcasing the development of King of the Hill, but there is no lost tape among it. And the press release for the donation mentions no such thing. Even searching the website turns up nothing. But if anyone is curious, you can contact the collection and make an appointment, you just have to go down to Texas. There is an old claim that some copy of the pilot did leak onto YouTube at some point. Multiple people claim to have seen it, but there is little support for these claims due to lack of descriptions on the pilot or even an outline of the plot. Plus, the upload, if it ever existed, has long since been pulled down, with not even a screenshot left that proves it was accessible. Even if there is no obtainable actual copy of the pilot, there is enough information to build a sketch of it, using information from several sources and a little guesswork. Also being able to understand how it diverged from its original incarnation. 
The best evidence for the cast of Monsignor Martinez is from the IMDb page. Though unsourced, the cast list seems legitimate as it matches up with several other major sources. Though voiced by Mike Judge in King of the Hill, Monsignor Martinez would have been played by Argentinian actor Ivo Cuzarida. The deuteragonist, John Smith, a stockbroker, would have been played by David Herman. And, though harder to pinpoint, Rene Riviera was attached in some form. His role is much more obscure, but I assume he would have been the villain of the series. I mean, look at those eyes. Interpreting the rest of the cast and characters requires looking at the theoretical plot. While it has never fully leaked, there does exist a brief description of the plot. One I stumbled upon in the Encyclopedia of Unaired Television Pilots, 1945-2018, to by Vincent Terrace. Not only is it recent, but it also gives the most detailed description of the Lost Pilot with unique information. The concept states, A live-action spin-off from the animated series King of the Hill about a renegade priest who takes the law into his own hands to deal with the crime in his Texas parish. It is not much, but it is a start one that can be united with other multiple pieces of information. Another synopsis comes from Joshua Millikan's article on Horror Freak News, referencing the show's entry and Richard Irvin's spinning laughter, profiles of 111 proposed comedy spin-offs and sequels that never became a series. Though I could not get my hands on Irvin's book, Millikan's article offers more than enough info. As the secondary synopsis states, a live-action spin-off of King of the Hill about a macho renegade priest who joins forces with a young stockbroker and ex-nun to destroy the drug dealer that murdered his favorite altar boy. Combining these two flushes out the details somewhat, but also shows the differences. The show was to take place in Texas, and Martinez was going to be more of a vigilante rather than, uh, whatever he originally was. With a little logic, the actors and roles can be matched up to create an outline. Beside Kutsarida as Martinez and Herman as John Smith, Donna Case, credited as Don, would have likely been the nun, then Franco Velez as Tony, who would have probably been the murdered altar boy, while Sofia Santi would have played his grieving mother. The others I am not so sure about. Michael McCafferty is credited as Ted, who I can only guess to be one of the drug dealer's underlings while two others are credited only as frat boy. The fact stunt coordinators were hired leads me to believe they were involved in some action scene. The story of the plot I have constructed runs as follows. After the altar boy is killed by the drug dealer, maybe even by Riviera's character, Martinez enlists the stockbroker and the nun for vengeance, as they have their own issues with the dealer. They go to a frat house looking for leads on the dealer, where they find Ted and an action scene occurs. Then they confront the drug dealer themselves. No proof, but this is what I have put together from what I have found. Now, I have attempted to reach out to some figures involved with the production, in hopes of getting any more info on Monsignor Martinez's plot or creation, as I stumbled upon an avenue of contact, but as of now, they have still not responded to my inquiries, and I do not feel at liberty to directly name anyone. Just tamper your expectations. Will Monsignor Martinez ever make it to the little screen? Uh, maybe, just not in his original or lost incarnation. That does not mean it is impossible, though. It is simply just highly unlikely. When even the creator no longer has a copy of something, it is definitely lost. Anything that remains is locked behind Fox's steel-tight doors, both physically and legally. The only hope is that one VHS or upload may still exist out there, somewhere in the ether. But there is enough material in existence that suggests maybe one day, the legendary Monsignor Martinez TV pilot will be uncovered, or simply unlocked. But until then, go with God, and Maya, con Dios. <laughs>